This is called knowing love. How can you know what love is until you've said goodbye to your father? Until you've said goodbye to your mother? Until you've sat in silence with your body? Until you've felt it burning? Until you've said goodbye to your false self? Until you've awakened to your own death and real life? Taken the protective sheet you've been wrapped up in and unfurled it as your flag of surrender? until you ride the wind, give voice to the chord of truth inside you, and heard yourself sing. Oh, yeah. OK, I'm Debbie Dark. <laughs> I have another story. Not quite. <laughs> So some bitch-ass friend of my mother's asked me, why did you come to New York, Debbie? To find yourself? <laughs> I didn't say anything. But I thought, of course! What do you think New York is for, lost lady? New York City is where you come to put all the pieces back together. It's hard plowing the fields of your soul. A long journey, damn hard, somewhere along the road. I became a teacher up in the Bronx for three years. For the first three months, I bounced around looking for a school where they thought I'd fit, and there wasn't one. My last chance was in some Bronx district office where the district superintendent says superintentionally, this is your last chance, Debbie. You're going to stay here in the district office and teach the kids who have been suspended from their schools for carrying a weapon or setting a fire on school property. My first thought was, at last, my people! <laughs> I had a paraprofessional, tough little Puerto Rican, Mr. Rico Perez, who bodyguarded my ass every day. The kids would come in for a few days or a few weeks. One of few months, he was a psycho py pyromaniac. And I'd give them lessons on, I don't know, <laughs> the Statue of Liberty. What does freedom mean to you in this temporary little jail you're in, Joseph. <laughs> Raphael, Carlos, they didn't write much. We danced to the multiplication tables. We ate lunch together. I made them write a little bit about their families. A few actually started telling me stuff. The stock. I need help. Can you help me? Last night, my pit bull fell off the roof of my building, and I couldn't sleep. Where were your parents, Joseph? They're dead. And my brother looks after me, but he's out of town because he's, body, he's a bodyguard for a comedian. Another kid, Shaquan, tells me, Miss Doc, my brother got shot. He's in the hospital. Okay, come with me, Shaquan. We're going to the guidance office. I don't know how to handle this shit. <laughs> Miss Doc, wait, wait for me. Miss Doc, you're funny. Miss Doc, I made this for you. Miss Doc, I love you. What? What? What the hell do I do with that? I mean, these kids are breaking my heart open. I'm feeling shit I've never felt before. I don't know. You know how they say you can run but you can't hide? Well, I was hiding, and I was doing just fine. It was just going to be, you know, another job. I just needed another job. I needed benefits, okay? I was tired of temping. How this shit's got to go and change me. Yeah! 